For a few decades, freezing your coffee beans is something coffee nerds would ridicule you for. Getting caught with a bag of beans jammed in your freezer was just about as embarrassing as getting caught at a Starbucks. Over the last few years, though, that's begun to change, albeit with a few pretty strong guardrails. Now, companies like Weber Workshops are producing premium coffee storage capsules with freezing your beans in mind, and flexing your stash of pre-dosed, frosty single origin is one of the biggest coffee nerd flexes one can really achieve. What caused this change in opinion? Well, there are a few things. For one, the way you store your coffee in a freezer matters a ton. When popping any food stuff in your freezer, there are two main concerns moisture redistribution, and flavor absorption. You can ruin good coffee by putting it in the freezer in the same way you can ruin a good steak. Much like a good steak, by sealing your beans in as small an airtight container as possible and only removing precisely as much as you need when you use it, you can significantly extend the flavor life of your beans without any adverse effects. Furthermore, many experiments done by others in the world of coffee suggest that grinding beans freshly pulled from the freezer can alter the nature of the resulting ground particles. While that might seem strange at first, it's also reasonably intuitive. Many things, particularly things with a lot of moisture in them, tend to shatter differently when they're ice cold than they do at room temperature. That said, there are also a few other sneaky confounding variables that I think might be impacting our espresso. The first is the impact that freezing may have on the distribution of moisture within the beans. The second is the effect of exposing those frosty beans to air, which, however briefly, will cause moisture to accumulate on the surface of the beans, slightly increasing their moisture. Fans of RDT will already know that slight differences in moisture can have a surprisingly significant impact on the extraction process. So, how can we untangle this moist mess? I wanted to run a simple experiment to see how frozen coffee storage may impact the flavor of the resulting shots. But I didn't just want to compare frozen beans against unfrozen ones. I also wanted to see if when you grind your beans after freezing them makes a noticeable difference. So, in this experiment, I compared unfrozen beans against both beans that were frozen and then allowed to return to room temperature, and beans that were frozen and then ground immediately after removing them from the freezer. All of these shots were pulled with a 20 gram dose for a duration of 30 seconds, using a grinder that was dialed in for a 35 gram output with room temperature coffee. I pulled these shots in an alternating fashion, going unfrozen, frozen, unfrozen, and so on, until I'd exhausted my dozen stored frozen doses. I tasted each pair of shots shortly after pulling them, and I also had a few fellow Clive staffers do impromptu single blind taste tests. While not done with the utmost scientific rigor, their help served as a handy gut check, and their company also helped me keep from going insane in the lab. All told, I pulled 24 shots. Six with frozen beans, six with frozen and then thawed beans, and 12 with unfrozen room temperature beans. With that out of the way, let's get to my data and notes from the experiment. The first thing that surprised me during testing was that the frozen and then thawed beans displayed almost no difference to room temp beans when brewing. When pulling alternating shots, the output in 30 seconds was essentially identical. While this may not come as a surprise to you, I had a hunch that just freezing the beans might be enough to affect brewing. While the recipe seemed indistinguishable, the taste did seem very subtly different. To my palate, the once frozen beans delivered a touch more acid brightness than their room temp counterparts. It was subtle enough that I was ready to write it off after the first pair, but after pulling a dozen shots, the difference was present in every shot despite being pulled very consistently to the same recipe. That said, a pair of colleagues were split on this in their blind taste tests. More interesting, unsurprisingly, were the doses that were ground while still icy cold. During brewing, it was immediately obvious that the flow rate was slower. Where the room temp and thawed shots all produced a very consistent 35 grams, the frozen beans immediately dropped to 30 grams. This result indicates what many other people have found with frozen beans. They produce more consistently sized particles that skew finer. These evenly sized fines result in more resistance from the puck and a slower flow rate when brewing. But that's not all. They also help produce higher extraction, meaning you get more tasty particles out of the grounds in the same amount of time. When tasting, the difference here was substantial. These shots had a crisp, clear brightness up front, and they also had far less of the herby, vegetal taste you can get on the back end when you pull a not-so-great shot of kickstep. I wouldn't describe this as night and day, it still tasted like the same coffee, but it was the difference between an excellent shot and a serviceable one. This is one of those experiments that makes me want to do a hundred more experiments. That said, the key takeaway here is that freezing your doses can have some significant benefits when it comes to both consistency and extraction. Having more consistently sized and overall finer particles means you can achieve higher extraction and better clarity of flavor. Whether or not the process of freezing your coffee is worthwhile for these gains is a personal question, but I can say that the Weber Bean Cellar makes it both easier and more satisfying.
In the near future, I'm excited to use our refractometer to see how freezing your beans might affect extraction for different coffees, grinders, and more. But let me know what you think would be the most interesting test in the comments below. To join us for whatever experiments we get up to next, tamp subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.